Welcome to the basics of uh, geometrical creation inside of 3ds Max uh, 2014. Uh, thus far, previous videos of mine have really kind of just gone into a lot of theoretical uh, or uh, very demonstrational basics of things that we're going to be able to do. But now we're going to actually get into uh, the probably the, the most important thing of all, and that is how to create objects. Uh, in sculpting, uh, you begin with a big chunk of clay or some kind of media that you're going to manipulate. And uh, in my, you know, most cases, you can add media to that if you need it. But uh, in, in, that, in, in that type of art, you're really stripping away um, and, and then exposing your final product. Where in Max, we're kind of building everything from nothing. And uh, we have all these tools that we're going to use uh, but one of the advantages of 3D art is the ability to just remove things and add them as we please with uh, little or no uh, precautions there uh, due to material constraints or whatnot. So enough of me uh, kind of lecturing you on that. Let's get right in, down and dirty. And I'm going to introduce you to the area over here uh, where it says create and we have our first tab which is called geometry and geometry is going to refer to objects when they are created that automatically have more than one dimension or more than that for, for that instance it's going to be three dimensions uh, don't be confused because we're going to talk about shapes in a moment shapes are two-dimensional objects so there's a difference between a box and a rectangle We'll start off with the basic box, and you're going to notice that the default here is called standard primitives. These are very generic objects that you can start for as building blocks. And I use the box as a good demonstration because a majority of your characters you see started off from a box. And you may you may not believe that at, at this point, but in a little bit I'm going to show you how uh, that happens. But uh, to create each shape or each primitive is is different for each object and I'm gonna have you uh, practice this skill during the video here with me or at the end of the video I want you to go and create one of each of these objects and see how they form now at the box you have to click with your left mouse and drag to define the original the first two dimensions once you release with the mouse then you'll drag again to determine that third Now I'm not dragging I'm 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 just moving the mouse and that's defining the third. Then I click and that cancels out the object that pretty much stops the addition of um, what I'm going to call extrusion, that third dimension. Once we have the box there we can manipulate it. We can take the move tool and move it wherever we want. And then we can also get comfortable with our viewports now. Remember this tool down here, if you click that, the selected object will zoom neatly in all the viewports so you can work on it. Now when you create a basic geometry shape here, um, the first time you create it, you have the ability to make some changes to it. But once you click off and back on, you lose that ability. Because you're in a creation mode, it's asking you, okay, what do you want to create next? So in order to actually go in and make changes to the basic geometry, we have to utilize our next tab, which is Modify. So Create is creating them from scratch. Modify is going in and making changes to them. Various things we can change with objects. We can change the name. I'm going to call it uh, My Box. You can also change the color. And don't get too hung up on the color right now because we're going to be talking about material application in a future module and this is just really a uh, generic color that represents the wireframe of the object um, we're going to learn how to actually apply textures and images and paint so to say to these objects at a later date so the this color is simply just again generic it's for uh, management inside the workspace we have a modifier list and we're going to look at modifiers in a future lesson here but below you have your basic parameters for a box you can change it the size by keying in the various numbers so I can do my 100 100 100 you also said that we have these segments in here length width and height segments and I, I don't want to go too far into that right now because uh, 
at this point, it's not going to make a difference, but in a future lesson, I'm going to show you why you would increase those segments. Uh, in order to kind of show you what happens, though, I'm going to choose the word edge faces just so you can see the wireframe. I'll maximize this view. And as I increase the segments, you're going to see that I'm not changing the actual box itself, but I'm putting more geometry in here. And what we're working with here is a geometrical uh, object created from a series of polygons. We are doing, this is called polygon modeling. And let me go ahead and increase these numbers up and show you what's happening here. Each one of these faces, as we're going to call them, help to make this box. Now, if I was down here and I had one, one, and one, this box has six faces on it, representing each side. By maybe increasing this by two, two, and two, even though the object has not physically changed, we've increased the file size because now this box has to obtain more points. Later on, you're going to learn how to manipulate these points and uh, these faces, but for now, you're not changing the physical vision of what the box is, but you're going to give us more opportunity to manipulate this box later. So at a later date, I'm going to go a little bit more into what length, width, and height segments do to benefit you. But for the most part, you select the object, you choose modify, and now you can manipulate that. Next, we're going to take a look. We're going to go back to create, and we're going to look at the cone. The cone method allows you to do um, various things. The sphere, the cylinder, the torus, the teapot, the geosphere, the tube, the pyramid, and of course the ever popular plane. Not an airplane, just a flat, it's a 3D geometry piece that has no thickness. These are standard primitives and uh, they're great building blocks for many of your projects, but we're going to find ways of changing these things and, and manipulating them into other shapes so that we can do that. Now, uh, again, you select any of these, you hit modify, you're going to see that the properties, the parameters are going to change in between the different objects. Specifically, you look at a cylinder and then you look at a sphere, you'll notice that uh, the cylinder has a height and a radius where the sphere has just a radius. The segments are going to uh, obviously change as I lower the segments down. It's going to manipulate how this sphere looks. As I increase the sphere, it gets smoother, yet the file size and the mesh is going to get very dense. So, we have, in addition to our standard primitives, when you come to the creation method under geometry, we have extended primitives. And these again are just an extension of the original tetrahedra, my favorite, the chamfer box, which allows you to put little chamfers on the ends of the box. We talk about the oil tank, spindle, Jengon, ring wave, prism. Torus knot, chamfer cylinder, capsule, the L extended, try to get a nice little, there we go, the C, and the hose. So, as you can see, from both the standard and extended primitives, we have a series of different objects here that we can use as starting points, as foundations. Um, you may look at the torus and say, when would I use this? Well, you know, you may not. But uh, your, your, your fundamentals, like the spheres, the chamfer box here is a big one, the chamfer cylinder is very useful, capsules and whatnot, help you get started in the right direction. And again, you can go into modify, change their names, their colors, their basic parameters, and look at how some of these work. 
For instance, a lot of the cylindrical objects allow you to increase the size for smoothness, but you could also take it down and make like a four-sided box there that uh, doesn't look like anything else. We also can change the height right here instead of going in and using the scale tool, and that's physically changing its units. We can uh, click the different options just to see what happens. We can turn on the slice and actually slice part of this, almost like a piece of pie or uh, a slice of pizza there. So using the slice on and off or slice to method allows you to kind of make something that looks like there's a chunk out of there. And uh, again, a lot of the uh, revolving objects will allow you to do that. All right, so now uh, we're not going to go too much into modifying or using uh, modifiers yet. We're going to go in and look at a second way of creating geometrical shapes. I'm going to go do just simply do a reset. I don't want to save this. And what I'm going to do now is introduce you to the next method. So we've been working with geometry, pre-made 3D shapes. We're going to look at shapes. And shapes are going to be two-dimensional objects that eventually we're going to be able to turn into 3D objects. But for now, they're great for making very unique type objects. For instance, the line tool. You'll notice that if you click the line tool and you don't, you just move the mouse and then click again, you're creating, every time you click, a line, a straight line from point A to point B and so forth. And I'm just moving the mouse and clicking. And um, then if I come back, I can actually, if, if I clicked right now, this would be considered an open shape, which uh, I'll go ahead and demonstrate what that looks like, where it, it's actually, there's no fill in it. We also have the ability to click. And when we come to the end, we're going to click, and it's going to ask us to close the spline. And, and we're working with splines right now. There's also up here an option for NURB curves, which is a more advanced method that we won't look at in this course. But splines are um, not just lines, they're curves and arcs and whatnot. A closed spline is going to look different than an open spline uh, when you go to manipulate this in a future lesson. Now, if you're familiar with the um, various line, or as, as I like to call it sometimes, the pen tool, um, we have the ability to click, click a second point, but before we release, drag with the left mouse. And you're getting that Bezier curve there that's pretty much, um, it, it, it takes some skill to learn this. Now what I'm doing is, is I'm clicking and I'm dragging and it's creating these arcs. And this is a skill that takes some practice. And uh, the more you practice, I'm going to click here, I'm going to go to close the spline, but I'm going to kind of pull this way because I want it to curve out before it, it, it splines and I've got myself like a very odd amoeba shape. Here's a skill I'd like you to practice and that is how do we make a circle? So what I'm going to do is I'm, first I'm going to make a rectangle just as a guide and I, I'm going to go through its properties. I'm going to type in 300 by 300 to make this a perfect square and I'm going to come out here and you know I you're looking and you say, okay, well, I can make a circle. I'd come out here and I'd do this. I'd draw this circle, and uh, let me make this a little easier to see. You've got this circle, and yeah, that is good, and you will most likely use that. But for this practice, how would you use the line tool to make a circle? And that's the skill I want you to practice here. You could go ahead and draw a box or a circle as a guide, or even both. Take your line tool, I want you to click at the first quadrant and then come to the second quadrant here. Drag along this line and you're going to see that it starts to curve the box to the sphere you want. Okay? Then click the next quadrant and pull in that direction. And you'll see how it's forming an arc. Now it's not a perfect arc, but if I stay straight, it is going to eventually bend it up there. And then I'm going to come to the closing point, and I'm going to pull in this direction. So give this skill a try, and I'll practice that. Pause the video for a second, and then uh, we'll continue from there. 
So we have uh, several things that we can do with those shapes. And um, in, in a future lesson, I'm going to show you how to take that and give that 2D shape a thickness. Now you have the different drag types. You can go in and do a corner. So no matter how much you drag, you are locked into a corner. And you, I suggest if you're doing like an architectural wall to use that method. We have our smooth which you're going to drag and you're going to notice that as you're dragging it's almost trying to curve for you and I kind of like this one uh, especially because it's there's no you know it, it really helps you try to uh, keep it nice and smooth now there are uh, ways of clicking and dragging sharp edges so there's really two two methods here you got your solid straight edges and then you got your nice curves that um, you want that organic look. All right. Uh, we also have your initial type and whatnot. Interpolation. When you drag, um, let's say for instance, a circle here, and we look at the circle. I want to brighten that up a little bit so that we can see it. You'll notice that the circle has, it, it's actually not a circle at all. It's a series of little points connected together. This can be fixed or improved by using what we call interpolation. And when you choose interpolation, these are the steps between the various points that make up this object. So if I increase this to say um, 20, you're going to notice that it's much smoother now as I move in there and back out where if I take the steps down to a one, you're going to pretty much not even have a circle anymore. You're going to have a series of faces. So by, by increasing that number, you're going to smooth out the shapes that you're working with, and that's called interpolation. We have other options here. We have an arc. Now, an arc is tricky when you draw it. You pretty much click and drag to define the starting and ending point, and then you release, and that actually uh, where you move the mouse determines how much of the arc you want. So I can go in and hit modify. I'm going to change that color up there. Oh, that was, a, that was a terrible color. Let's make it a little brighter there. And there we can see that we have an arc that's almost like a perfect point between two. We also have underneath the creation method your end gone, which allows you to change how many sides you want. So you can pretty much go and and do an octagon or a pentagon or whatever you need based on the uh, direction that you're going here. Text. We're going to do a future lesson in text. We're going to talk a little bit about using text to create 3D graffiti or uh, manipulating it for a corporate identity package or a 3D logo for a production company uh, of, of that sort. The egg. Uh, simply uh, said there, you've got yourself a, an eggshell that can be manipulated. We have the rectangle. We have the ellipse. We have the donut. We have a star. Helix. And then we have a section, which uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about those in the future. Now, all of these are spline-based. And you can see when you draw with a line tool, for instance, I click here, here, and here, and I go into modify, that the line allows me to actually go in and break this spline into various pieces. For instance, if I click the first one, I can actually touch the various vertices, or individually they're called a vertex, and move just that vertex. It leaves the other two anchored, and it will simply move that third piece where you want it. You also have the segment. So I could grab this segment, and you'll notice I can move that segment, and it doesn't change, because it's connected, sort of linked to the other. And then we have the whole line segment element, which you're probably saying, why don't I just move the whole line? You'll see the benefits of those in the future lesson. So we have, when we create a basic spline or a line, we have the ability to break this down into the vertex, the segment, and the spline. But when you click on, say, the text, for instance, 
and you go to modify, you'll see that the text doesn't give you the option to do that. It will let you change the Arial font to a different font, any font pretty much on the system, uh, change the size of the text as well as what the text says. But there's no way to manipulate these individual pieces. Therefore, we'll move into what we call modifier. And in a future lesson, I'm going to go into how to m manipulate these objects and turn them into 3D shapes. And that's where our next lesson is going to go. So this concludes our, our lesson on uh, basic geometrical creation. And uh, in the future lesson, we're going to start working with these shapes to kind of build more complex shapes.